so much better than last year. This is what wine grapes are supposed to look like. Very nice fruit. So when we were out here last July, um, that was at the end of the second flight. Uh, we came out to see what was going on, and that's what we're doing today. This is harvest. Uh, this is October 1st. Um, these guys are just starting to pick. Uh, the peak flight of the third generation happened oh, sometime probably early September. Um, last year when we were out at this time, every bunch in this vineyard had botrytis. And these aren't really good examples, but this is kind of what it was, only worse. And when you broke these open, you would find two, three, four larvae in every cluster. And so as you look out here, you have 11 acre vineyard with 12 clusters or more. Uh, that was a maggot infested vineyard. And so when we came out in April of this year to see how many moths had emerged, uh, moths were everywhere. It, it was beyond anything that I had ever seen and anything that uh, uh, any growers in this area had ever seen. It, it, it was just uh, mind-numbing to see the pest population that uh, we were looking to deal with for this coming year. So now we've come out, we're checking to see where we are at harvest. Are there any moths? Can we find Labija out here? Um, you know, he's done all of his applications of, uh, of insecticides. He's used the mating disruption. He's done some monitoring to see. He says bunch rot is, bunch rot is, is almost uh, impossible to find. Some of this other damage is sunburn when it got uh, too hot a couple weeks ago. Uh, but, you know, this is just a, a completely different uh, situation than it was last year. Last year, there was no crop coming out of this field. This year, it's a very harvestable co commodity. Uh, a great crop of Chardonnay is coming out of here. What I was gonna do was to take a look at some of these clusters that look like they have bunch rot and see if there's Labesia in there. There's a close association uh, where there's bunch rot, there's Labesia. But what I see here is uh, a little bit of bunch rot I don't see any webbing uh, from the larva. I don't see any larva. Uh, I don't see any, you know, frass, insect droppings. I don't see cast skins. I don't see pupa. Uh, I don't see anything here that would lead me to believe uh, there's any European grapevine moth here. And that's been consistent uh, all year here. And because he was so successful in accomplishing what it would appear to be eradicating this moth from this vineyard, uh, the approaches that he used, the tools, the teamwork, everything that came into this really should be considered the model for addressing European grapevine moth when it's found. In order to ensure that this grower continues to have a bountiful harvest, not just this year, but for years into the future, is every grower needs to take the same measures that he's taken to successfully combat European grapevine moth. Uh, not terribly complicated, but there are some key things that he did and that growers can do. And a lot of it centers around the mating disruption and the properly timed materials. If the growers in this community and elsewhere where European grapevine moth has been found uh, follow these protocols, they're gonna have the same great results this grower has, that the project has, and uh, continue farming.